What's going on, boys and girls? BBD back for another Tennessee video. 14 years running right here on YouTube. Can't wait to get into this one. All right, guys, today's video, two days ahead of the start of the 2023 season, Josh Heupel's third season at Tennessee. I want to talk a little bit about the history of Tennessee football as I've seen it for the past 44 years. 44 years since I went to my first Tennessee game, a home game against the Pittsburgh Panthers in 1980. Times were different back in the 1980s. The stadium wasn't as loud the band was the only music you heard played in the stadium pretty much back then. Both bands dueling back and forth. Pittsburgh came in a favorite team. Tennessee trying to get back into the winning ways. Brought Reggie White into this game on defense. Johnny Majors was the head coach. Pittsburgh countered with Dan Marino, who didn't play that day. But here's some things I remember about this game. One... Pittsburgh kicked our butts that day, 30-6. to six. So it wasn't a rousing Tennessee victory for me to watch. Now it will be Trout to kick off. Deeper jealousy is golf. The kick coming downfield. Golf backing up will pull it down at the goal line. Back to the 5, to the 10, out to the 15. Breaks open to the 20. He's in the open. 30, 35. They'll never get him. It's going to be Willie Golf to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Give him six. Touchdown, Tennessee. Second thing I remember is the Pittsburgh band playing the Queen hit, Another One Bites the Dust. To this day, if I hear that song on the radio, I'm turning it immediately. Different day, different time, different college football game altogether. Just look at the equipment football teams wore back in the 80s. The giant shoulder pads, the weird-looking face mask, the big neck rolls. It was a different time. It was a different experience. When you walked into Neyland Stadium in the 80s, for me, it, it just smelled like college football on a Saturday. It was glorious, and it was what made me the ball fanatic I am to this day. Let's move forward just a little bit to 1982. Alabama comes rolling in with Walter Lewis at quarterback. Tennessee counters with Alan Cockrell. Man, what a game. Alabama came in favored, heavily favored. The University of Alabama ranked second in the nation, the University of Tennessee. They were on an 11-game win streak against Tennessee, but I'll never forget it. It was a beautiful day. The World's Fair was still going on. We had the orange balloons that we used to release back in the 80s. The pride of the Southland band forming the giant team. And now, with orange balloons soaring into the sky, it's football time in Tennessee. And you get a chance to experience the thrill of racing onto the field through the giant team. Uh, John Ward says it better than me. Getting into the game, I won't take you through the entire game. I'll take you down to the last series Alabama had. They were driving, trailing 35-28. to 28. Looked like they were either going to tie the game and the game would end up in a tie or possibly go for two. We don't know. We'll never know because Walter Lewis throws a pass into the end zone. It's tipped and deflected and Mike Terry picks it off. 35 to 28. Lewis looking into the end zone. Long pass is deflected. Intercepted Tennessee. Tennessee with Cockrell at quarterback. He falls on the ball, protected by Furness, and the fans will count it down. Tennessee has beaten Alabama. Ball game over. Vols win 35-28. to Crowd rushes the field. Goalposts come down. Remember that. It's important in this story. Moving forward, I've seen tons of great games over the years at Tennessee. Uh, I've seen some disappointing games, like the 85 Georgia Tech game, which ended in a tie, the 
85 UCLA game, which ended in a tie. Then you get to the end of the season. Tennessee somehow managed to climb up in the rankings. It was a disastrous but beautiful year. Tony Robinson, widely considered the best quarterback in the country, gets hurt. Daryl Dickey, a nobody, comes in, replaces him, takes the balls to the Sugar Bowl. Everyone on this planet thought that Miami was going to come in there. Jimmy Johnson, their head coach, uh, Vinny Testaverde, the quarterback, all those brash Miami defense guys talking crap, talking smack to the opposing players. Miami was going to come into this game and just kick Tennessee around like a little kit toy. And they got off to a fast start, 7 to nothing lead. Everybody's thinking, okay, here we go. The fun's over. The parties are over. Now Miami's going to kick Tennessee's butt. They're going to end up national champs, blah, blah, blah. Not so fast, my friend. Jeff Powell, a nobody before this season starts. Because of injuries, ends up the starting running back late in the season, and he made his mark in this game with this beautiful run, which will never be forgotten by us Tennessee fans. Time remaining third quarter, 7-21. Dickey hands the ball off. It goes to Jeff Powell. Powell is gone! Goodbye! Touchdown! Boy, was that dude fast. He was a track guy. Came on, got the last scholarship available that year, and made his mark on Tennessee football and Tennessee football history. Let's flash forward to 1995. Tennessee, once again on a losing streak to Alabama. Bama had eight wins and one tie. The David Palmer game in 1993 down there in Legion Field was awful. Tennessee had that game won. But nope, David Palmer... Two touchdowns, two two-point conversions later, Alabama gets the tie. 95, we're going down to Legion Field on a nine-game winless streak again against Bama. Who will forget this iconic play in Tennessee football history? Beautiful orange sunset over Legion Field, the exact color of Tennessee's uniforms. Is that an omen? Tennessee to throw on first down. Right over the middle. They've got Kent open, and he breaks him into the secondary. He needs a block, and he couldn't go the distance. Touchdown, Tennessee. Joey Kent, play number one. I was there. Me and my brother and a friend from Raleigh were there. Uh, it, it was a crazy beginning. Tennessee goes on, hammers Alabama, end up going on a little win streak of our own now. Uh, seven games, maybe. Anyway, we, we were on a win streak until some dude named Nick Saban showed up. Uh, but before we get to the Nick Saban at Alabama and the Tennessee disaster years, there's this little thing that Tennessee won called the, uh, oh, the National Championship. And, man, what a year that was. Comeback wins over Syracuse. The biggest win, the comeback win over Arkansas. On the mammoth crowd of more than 107,000. When Tennessee had finally, after all these years, for the first time in my lifetime, climbed the mountain and made it to number one in the polls, but it looked like they were going to lose it after only one week. Arkansas came in. They were undefeated. All the Tennessee fans are thinking, uh, we got this game. But an iconic play again in the history of Tennessee football, the Clint Sterner fumble. Recovered by Billy Ratliff. To go for the first down. Sterner lost the football! Oh my goodness! He stumbled and fumbled! And Billy Ratliff recovered! My boy, my good friend, Billy Ratliff, number 40. Tennessee, it was over at that point. Actually, it was over before the fumble. All Arkansas had to do was run out the clock. Why in the world they were calling a pass play at that point is beyond me. That's Houston Nutt for you. I mean, he's named Nutt for a reason, right? So Billy Ratliff recovers the fumble. Tennessee and the Cheese, Travis Henry, smash Arkansas all the way down the field, score the touchdown, ball game. Tennessee wins. The backfield this time. Henry, up and over. Touchdown, Tennessee! The rest of that season's pretty much history. Tennessee cruises on through the SEC championship game and 
unbelievably enough, they had to depend on some other people to lose to make it to the BCS National Championship game. The first BCS National Championship game. Against who? The always highly ranked, but this year overrated Florida State Seminoles. They had something called the rooster at quarterback. And uh, Billy Ratliff will tell you a story about this game and how bad Tennessee really beat Florida State. The score was not indicative of how bad Tennessee just crushed Florida State. But like I always say, whether you win by one point or a thousand points, a win is a win. And when you're playing for Donati, any victory is a victory. And Tennessee got just that. Capturing the 1998 National Championship and capturing my heart forever. That's going to wrap up part one of this look back. Stay tuned in the coming days for part two and the finish of my look at the history of Tennessee football through the eyes of BBD. For now, I love you, mean it. Hug your mom and daddy, and let's go out and hammer the Virginia Cavaliers as we start year three of the Josh Heupel era. And the natty, who knows, why not us? Go balls, Screw y'alls.